So we discovered uh, in the direct kinematics that the orientation uh, needs more curve than the position. And this is the same also now that we want to implement a feedback control law. And uh, we need to pay attention to the way we represent the orientation error. The concept of orientation error is a little bit tricky. Uh, if uh, you have uh, a rigid body, that is the end effect, or with a certain orientation, and you want to go in another orientation, well, there are different ways to, to go there. It's the same if you want to go from one point to another. So what is the most appropriate one? From what also perspective uh, appropriate or not? We need to, to think a little bit uh, and to study a little bit the dynamics of the orientation error. With the position, everything is uh, nice uh, and everything uh, is uh, more or less simple. In the sense that uh, the, the physical meaning of the time derivative of the position as the linear velocity is clear. And the error always produces you the velocity that goes to the um, null error along the, the segment connecting the position where you are to the position where you want to go. But the orientation is not so trivial. Let us first consider the simplest possible expression for the orientation error, the desired quantity minus the current one. So we just use uh, the error as uh, we did uh, up to now with the previous two controllers. So we just say x desired minus x. And let's see what does it mean for orientation. For orientation means my e, e with the now subscript O for orientation is equal, okay, phi desired minus phi, where phi is, uh, let's let imagine uh, at the roll pitch uh, your representation, okay? So it's a three-dimensional vector with roll pitch uh, u. The desired one minus the current one, okay? And what is the time derivative of this guy? Is e dot equal phi dot desired minus phi dot. The time derivative of roll pitch uh, u, but we already have studied the differential kinematics, and we saw that the time derivative of uh, the orientation representation, the minimal, such as roll pitch U, is not the angular velocity. For the position, the time derivative is a linear velocity. For the orientation, it's not. So roll pitch U, you take roll pitch U, you make the time derivative, this is not the angular velocity. This is the time derivative of roll pitch u. And does not have physical meaning because we already saw it. When we studied the, the differential kinematics for orientation, we saw that uh, roll pitch u, time derivative, does not have physical meaning. And the, the, the price that we are going to pay for this uh, lack of uh, uh, physical interpretation is in a, let me say, more complex handle of the orientation error, or on the other end, we can, we can consider this as a, we will see that it's not, the movement is not natural. So it's very nice to assign the time evolution in roll pitch u because you just say, okay, I want roll to go from uh, zero to 10 degrees. I want the, P, the, the u, typically not, to follow a certain path. And you just assign a time loop. But then uh, the movement is not the way the, what you would expect. And we will see a numerical case briefly. The geometrical interpretation of the movement is unclear. It's exactly what I said. I mean, the movement is not really as nice as you would imagine. Uh, 
Then this is copied from the textbook. Yes, it, it requires computational representation matrix. As I, as I told you, computational issues are not most of the most, most of what used to be a computational issue several years ago is not anymore a computational issue. So you can compute a rotation matrix without without problem for uh, robotic applications with you know a small number of degrees of freedom. Okay, what happened if I use uh, axis angle? Axis angle uh, does not solve the representation in, with the axis angle does not solve the, the issue. <coughs> First of all, the error now is not uh, the difference between a certain desired uh, and current value because it doesn't have uh, any sense. Now, I need to stay at the rotation level and then it say, okay, what is the rotation that I need to go from the current rotation matrix to the desired one. This is the rotation that I need to implement, okay? Given by the composition of the two rotations. So now we are changing the definition of the errors. This is not anymore the difference between a desired and a current value. Now this is the composition of two rotations and uh, the left hand side of these terms is the rotation that you need to align the current with the uh, frame with the desired and expected frame, okay? So this is the rotation that you need. Okay, from this rotation, I can extract axis angle and uh, I have uh, a certain, uh, at this point, uh, error that I want to, to send to zero, okay? Each time derivative is this one, where there is a certain strange matrix L. Uh, what is important here to notice is not the expression. I don't care about the expressions I find in a textbook and also if I want I can write it down and make the computations but we need to focus the attention in the fact that here again I do not have uh, the difference in the angular velocities I have the angular velocities multiplied by something else still uh, there is not a strong physical interpretation okay this is just uh, Okay, we need, to, we need to keep in memory the rotation, but we are not going to use uh, the axis angle based orientation error. We can use sometimes the roll pitch IO for some reasons, but I don't like it very much because of the physical interpretation. So we are going to use quaternions. Okay, that's the reason why we introduced this very strange uh, orientation representation in the beginning. As I told you that quaternions has a lot of very positive aspects, but they totally lack the interpretation. So if I give you four numbers, or you give me four numbers, this is a quaternion. I don't understand what is the rotation. I need to, to draw it. With roll picture, you, it's easy, okay? Okay, this is the error dynamics. We are going to skip this. We are going to use quaternions. So, the rotation needed to align the two frames is given by the composition of the rotations. With quaternions, we do know that we can multiply, properly multiply two quaternions to implement the composition of rotations. So this is exactly conceptually equal to the previous uh, error definition. And this is the quaternions that I need, okay? I extract uh, the vector part and I do have a certain expression that is function of the current and desired quaternion. Now, what is very interesting is 
that if I do implement Q dot equal uh, J minus one, and then uh, here I have uh, for the orientation part, uh, omega desired plus K E orientation, where the orientation is represented in that way. Well, the differential equation that represent the evolution of the orientation errors is a linear differential equation with a very strong with a very strong now geometric interpretation we will see soon a, a practical example. But the fact that I don't have any strange nonlinear stuff here, pre multiplied omega, means that the evolution of this guy is exactly what I would expect with my geometric intuition. And let's see. One example. Uh, we can demonstrate uh, the stability for the orientation. We are going to skip this, okay? We're not going to enter into the details using again the Lyapunov stability theorem. Okay, let us see practically why the geometric interpretation of oil angles uh, is not so nice as a feedback with the quarter. In the left hand side, we do have uh, an initial orientation for an end effector. So I just draw the, the frame. RGB is X, Y, Z, so red, green, blue. And in the left hand side, I have uh, both the initial and the final orientation, the desired orientation. If you look, this is a rotation of uh, 45 degrees around X, okay? This is simply what I want, okay? So let us implement the feedback of um, ZYZ and Quaternion. Let's see what we are going to have here. We have four plots. Top left, this is the time evolution of the quaternion. In the X axis, we have time. And uh, in the Y, we have uh, the three components of the quaternion error, okay? Quaternion has four components, but we feedback only the vector part, okay? The three components. I'm sorry, not the error. This is the real one, okay? Top, top right, Z, Y, Z. It goes from uh, the initial to the final value. Then we have the quaternion error and the ZYZ error. I don't see anything strange. It's, everything is very nice, okay? I don't have any comments to do here. Yes, I mean, I, I don't have any, any objection. If you just show me, okay, we may, we feedback the, the, with, the co with the controller that we saw. We implemented uh, our, our uh, control loop, um, and this is the evolution of, uh, of the two cases, with quaternion and, and, and Euler angles. Okay, that's fine, I don't see Nothing critical. Okay, just pay attention the unit measurement. Quaternion is unitless, and uh, Euler angles are radians or degrees. Okay, just this is the only thing that I would, would like you to, to, to pay attention. However, the error goes to zero, very nice. Okay, however, when I draw the angular velocities, those are expressed in the, in the base frame. Here I have uh, the blue are the three components 
of the angular velocity feeding back Euler angles. And red is the angular velocity, the three components red, there are three lines, okay? You see two because uh, two are superimposed on zero, red one. When I feed back quaternion, so now I need to wake up one of my neurons because something is, is not nice. Let's see what I wanted to do. <coughs> I want to make a rotation around X. This is uh, my end effector, and x is going out. What I want to do is this moment here, okay? I'm making a specific moment here to show you the rotation that I want to do. I'm not making this rotation or this rotation. The, the result is the same, 45 degrees rotation. But if I want to show you the movement, I just make a rotation around X. I stay around X, okay? Initial is this one. The final is a rotation of 45 around X. And during the movement, if I want to show you the movement, I just keep the axis of rotation constant. I don't do something like that. Here we have, uh, here we have uh, with the blue one, three components different from zero. The angular velocity of the Euler angles feedback. All the three are different from zero. With quaternions, only one is different from zero. It means that I'm rotating around one axis. That is x. And we can better appreciate it with the snapshots of the movement. This is the rotation around, uh, this is the rotation with the quaternion. So my snapshots show that uh, x remain constant, okay? And the only component uh, of the linear velocity was uh, of the angular velocity, sorry, was the component around along x. With the z, y, z, look at the snapshot. I'm changing the axis to rotation, okay? And I can also better appreciate uh, if I change uh, perspective. Here I'm just changing the view. So my axis rotation, I'm not making this rotation, I'm making a very strange rotation. I'm losing the physical interpretation. The time derivative of the Euler angles is not the angular velocity. It's something that does not have physical meaning. And the price to pay is that I don't have, a, let me say, a nice transient. I'm changing all the directions. It means that uh, even if I want to assign a desired trajectory with the Euler angles, uh, is much more, um, is less intuitive, so it's much more complex. I, I, I cannot implement in an industrial environment something that uh, to go from this orientation to this one changing, is changing the X. It's not intuitive. Or I need to work on the, on the uh, desired trajectory in the uh, PCO, but I do have uh, another tool that is the quaternion that solves this problem. The only thing that is very, um, that is not very, that is a little bit unpleasant uh, with quaternion is that you lose uh, the capability to, 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 to read what is the angle with the numbers. But as I told you, and uh, not only robotic stuff, 
when you need to plot, when you need to visualize the orientation, just convert them in rotation matrices or roll pitch AU if, you, if you're using, if you're working with vehicles, roll pitch AU or whatever you want, axis angle. But internally in your algorithm, you do use quaternions. Okay, now, a, this is a very specific uh, aspect that can arise with any kind of uh, orientation representation and you will eventually meet in your project. So let me spend two words about it. Now, let's have a look uh, at uh, those frames. I have here a base frame, inertial frame, and then uh, I have uh, the desired frame that is almost minus pi, okay, almost, is a little bit less, is uh, minus uh, 175 degrees, okay? And then uh, let us imagine that uh, you have uh, two different robots with two different uh, uh, orientation. One is x1 and the other is x2, and uh, <coughs> x1 is uh, a U, this is the U, a U of uh, minus 160, and the second is uh, a U of uh, 170. So if you look uh, here, I'm close to minus pi, okay? This is, if you, if you don't handle this issue, you will uh, encounter problem during the project. Okay, in quaternion, I have those number. Uh, I, I cannot read it, but I just made the conversion and quaternion are those numbers. Okay, let us see what happened. If uh, I use the error definition, that is the desired value minus the, the current one, the error is minus 15 degrees. Minus 15 degrees means a rotation uh, clockwise, okay? Because positive is counterclockwise by uh, convention, for our convention. So minus means, and that's fine, okay? So this uh, is going to align x1 with x desired, and I'm happy with that, okay? In, uh, in, uh, in quaternion is fine as well. Now, what happened with the second one? If I make the desired minus uh, the current one, in roll pitch AU, I have uh, an error of uh, minus 345 degrees. It means that I'm going to make an almost two pi rotation. This is why this is a two pi rotation issue. It's very simple. We need a, a very simple patch to handle it and to make uh, a, a, let me say, warp of plus minus pi, okay? In case you see your end effector that makes a two pi rotation, this is a problem. Uh, and the, the, with quaternion, you have the same. I'm, uh, I'm showing you the animation of uh, students of last year, okay? So it happened last year. Uh, we first have a movement, this is the correct one. Now, if you look at the end effector, you can see that uh, it is making two pi rotation to come back. Uh, the, the, uh, the request for this robot was to make a continuous movement around a certain axis, like, like a screw movement, okay? And if you look here, If you look here, it's following a certain movement, in a certain moment, come back of two pi, and then repeat the movement, okay? This was simply this error that can be handled easily. This is the good one. Now the movement starts and just rotate without any problem. 
Okay? You can appreciate the screw movement. This is the correct one. The wrong one, it came back of 2 pi every, every time that it encountered this problem. Okay, this is a specific one. In case you just pay attention, you have those two slides where it is explained. And Okay, let's finish with uh, a comparison, a numerical comparison. Uh, we consider a trilling planar robot. This is the direct kinematics. Uh, since this is a very simple robot, uh, we can write it down. But as I told you, we are not going to write it down. We have a function that computes the direct kinematics. Okay? This is the analytical Jacobian. For this specific case, uh, it's very simple because the orientation is just the sum of the three joints, the planar trilling. This is the initial configuration. is given by the problem, the initial configuration of the robot. This is the initial configuration orientation for the end effector. And I have a certain desired trajectory, simply a sinusoidal trajectory, okay, without specific uh, uh, interpretation. This is the trajectory that I want to follow, and I want to implement the arguments that we saw today. First of all, without uh, any feedback, it just discretizes and implements. And I, I, I told you we are going to face a drift. What does it mean a drift? Let's see what does it mean a drift. Uh, sample time, one millisecond. One millisecond uh, is uh, uh, appropriate sampling time with uh, the dynamics of most of the robot uh, existing market uh, when you want to, to have a specific application such as interaction with the environment uh, you may benefit from uh, a smaller sampling time so from a higher frequency but one millisecond is I mean, we, we work with 10 milliseconds in our lab it's, it's okay as a, a sampling time okay open loop inversion I discretize Q dot equal the inverse of the Jacobian multiplied X dot the side. And uh, I do have uh, in the left plot, uh, the label is in Italian, but is the norm of the position error. And the right plot is the orientation error. Okay? In this case, it's not the norm because it's just the orientation around. Look, uh, the error does not go to zero. The error is, uh, is integrating a numerical discretization error. It doesn't have uh, any information on how to come back to zero. It's open loop. This is an open loop discretization. So it's not going to zero. The numerical value is affected by some factors that, I mean, are out of robotics is just mathematically sampling time norm of the velocities those are the factors that affect the numerical value we cannot I, I don't care if this is small or not it is different from zero okay so I don't like it it's, it's not appropriate to use and for orientation is the same okay I need to implement closed loop uh, uh, differential kinematic inversion algorithm. This is the first closed loop we are going to see. Let's see the various plots. So the same uh, minus one, my problem is square, I make the inversion of the analytical Jacobian, but now here I have uh, something more. I don't have only x dot desire, I have x dot desire plus ke feedback. My K is 500, 500, 100. Now, I've been disappointed already this morning, so I'm not going to ask to my students what does it mean 500. Can I ask you what does it mean? What is the interpretation of 500? Uh, in, uh, the gain on the yes, those are the gains, uh, and uh, in terms of uh, evolution of the error, what is the interpretation? Can I read the the, the constant time here. Yes. 
And what is the constant time? One over uh, Yes, okay. Okay, I, I'm happy with that. Okay. Huh? Yes, yes. Okay. So, we do have different numbers for position orientation. 500 and 500 are X and Y, and 100 is the orientation. They have different unit measurements, so there is no reason to have the same uh, numbers for, for both. It can arrive that they have the same numbers, okay, but uh, in the code you should have two different variables, because you should show evidence that you know that position orientation, they do have different unit measurement, and they need to have different variables that handle that, okay? So top left, joint position. I don't care. I only can appreciate that it's not a sinusoidal function because there is, there is a nonlinear mapping between the end effector where I do want a sinusoidal movement to the joint. Top right, joint velocity, okay? Then bottom left, norm of the end effector position error is limited during transient and goes to zero when the desired trajectory stops. And goes to zero very fast. We cannot see here the transient because the transient is, uh, the constant time is, as, as uh, your colleague said, is one divided by 500, two milliseconds. So it, 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 uh, went to zero in the 10 milliseconds. And here, the time scale is from zero to five seconds. So that's the reason why it seems to be just a, a, a line going to zero, okay? Interesting, this is bounded, uh, a numerical value that is much smaller than the previous one. We are integrated with the same desired trajectory, with the same sampling time, but of course this is less. And the orientation error also is going to zero, this is zero, and this is minus eight. So all the transient is very small and then goes to zero very, not very fast, sorry. Go, uh, goes to zero with uh, the assigned dynamics. You decide how fast it's going to zero, okay? Redundancy, let us ignore the orientation. I want to implement the pseudo-inverts without exploiting redundancy. Here, this is only pseudo-inverts, okay? Without the null space. And obviously, the position error goes to zero, but the orientation error is not. I'm not feeding back the orientation. So it's in, in the orientation, there is no reason why it, it should go to zero. Transpose base, this is the transpose based, and for the redundant case, JP transpose, I can notice that, uh, okay, it's going to zero, okay, when, uh, when the desired trajectory stops, that's fine, but with the same gains, 500, I do have a totally different, uh, totally different errors. Well, the, the gains, they do have a totally different interpretation in different control laws. In one case, we linearize the dynamics. In the other, the equations still are nonlinear. And the J stays within uh, the dynamics of the errors. So it's not very easy to, to, to understand for you now, but what is important to observe is that if you use transpose or set inverse, the gains are not the same. In your code, you will use both, and so you should have uh, an if. If I'm using the transpose, those are the gains that I selected. Else, I'm using the set inverse, and those are the gains that I'm going to select, okay? Keep the possibility to change the gains because the meaning of the gain is different. Okay. 
let us exploit the redundancy with uh, the manipulability measure, okay? The manipulability measure with k, with a certain k, k with a certain gain, and this is uh, the new space projector. Now, I have uh, the draws of uh, the two cases with and without exploding redundancy. And let us uh, see a little bit the two cases. Here, top left, joint position without exploitation, top right, joint position exploiting the redundancy. I cannot appreciate uh, anything looking at joint position, okay? There is no specific information. End effect or position error goes to zero, yes, very nice, because the exploitation of the redundancy does not have to change my main objective to, to send to zero the end effect. And then uh, what is interesting is, is to observe the manipulability. This is the manipulability measure over the time during the movement. In one case, uh, the solid line is without explo uh, I'm sorry, I want to maximize it. So uh, the dashed line is without exploiting the redundancy. And the solid line is exploiting the redundancy. I can appreciate that if I do exploit the redundancy, I'm locally maximizing this matrix. Locally means that I cannot guarantee in any case that I'm always increasing this matrix, of course. If you look at the first seconds, in both cases, the matrix is going down, okay? I can stay a little bit far from kinematic singularities, but I cannot guarantee that I'm avoiding the kinematic singularity. If you look uh, after certain movement, uh, here, for example, at seconds 2.5, they do have exactly the same value. Locally, I can try to stay away from <coughs> kinematic singularity. For example, here, at second 4, if you see, here there is a very nice difference. Uh, in, my, in one case, I'm going in, a, in a increasing the, the manipulability measure. In the other case, without exploiting the redundancy, I'm going to toward a, a kinematic singularity, closer to a kinematic singularity. But I cannot guarantee anything on a global perspective. Everything is only look. Uh, I'm just going to show you the, the plot of uh, the maximization of distance from the joint limit. And uh, here you can appreciate that the argument is trying to send the joint to the middle of those two dashed lines that represent the joint limits. But as for the manipulability measure, if your trajectory is going to hit the mechanical joint limit, the redundancy cannot avoid it, okay? It can try to stay far, but if uh, the geometry of the problem is going to to meet a, a mechanical limit or a kinematic singularity, you cannot avoid it. Okay. So uh, here I just wrote one, one uh, page uh, that I will repeat. Uh, next Monday we will make uh, um, a very simple lesson on uh, generation of a desired trajectory. Friday theory and Monday the, the, the generation of the traje desired trajectory very, I mean, separate from, uh, from uh, apparently separate from, from uh, Jacobians. Uh, but then uh, the following Monday, we are going to, to implement the first uh, algorithms of uh, kinematic inversion. And here there is a suggestion how to, uh, how to define your variables in, the, in, in your code. We are going to we are going to see it. So the, the, is it here only for memory, but this is also in the, in the slides and the PDF of the, of the practice lesson, okay? This is only to, it's here for you. And uh, this is the pseudocode. The pseudocode is quite interesting 
for its simplicity. And you have uh, a MATLAB function. You need to first initialize all the variables. Okay, we'll see. Then uh, at every control loop, uh, what you need to do is very simple. First of all, you generate the desired and the factor value. For example, we assign a certain time law. We ask to have a certain orientation. In an experiment, we can wait for the joystick or a tablet or whatever. Okay, but first, you need to acquire the end effect or uh, desired value. Then, you compute the current one. In, a, in an experiment, you read the sensor. We are not in an experiment. We do have Q. We compute the direct thematics, and we compute position orientation the end effect. Then we compute our controller with the pseudocode uh, that we saw. So we compute the error, we compute the Jacobian, we compute Q dot, and finally we make the integration. Why we can make the integration? Uh, just integrate Q dot. Because we are making the assumption that the low level controller is perfect. So whatever I ask to Q dot, it instantaneously follow my Q dot. Okay, this is the assumption of low level controller perfect. And this is the assumption that uh, Maya and mechanical engineering will do. Is there any mechanical engineering left in the class? You are the only one? You two? Three? Okay. Now today, today, the three of you are from uh, mechanical engineering. You are not. Uh, you are Maya. Maya, you are Maya. Okay, so you are the only one. Okay, the other left. Okay. Ah, no, just today. Okay, okay. It, w was it fun that I made a mistake? No. Yes. yes? Why? Why? Sorry. I, I know that uh, the students of mechanical engineers are all Indians. So, and they sit in the back place. So, the back place. so <laughs> you two, you look India. I don't know where are you from. Where are you from? India. You? Uh, so it is. <laughs> it's a reasonable mistake. Okay, the last last slides, and we stop for today. This is a brief recap. Actually, today we have seen uh, several different ways to implement uh, uh, algorithms for inverse kinematics. We can implement all of them depending on the situation, so we will decide. Of course, there are some that are better than others. But, for example, if we want to use uh, the uh, orientation error as uh, uh, difference between desired and uh, current value, so for example with the uh, roll pitch yo, with the tracking case, redundant, this is the expression we are going to use. We need to use uh, analytical Jacobian, of course, pseudo inverts, and then the orientation error is given by simply the difference of phi desired minus phi e, okay? We can do whatever we want, as long as we are consistent uh, with the selection selections that we make. For example, if I want to use the geometric Jacobian, of course, uh, here I use the geometric Jacobian, but the error is not anymore the difference between phi desired minus phi e. The error now is uh, the quaternion-based error, okay? And here I have omega desired. I don't have any more phi dot desired. So omega desire means that I need to be able to produce omega desire. This is something that we will see next Friday. If I want to implement a regulation case, so I just want to go in this point. I don't care about the velocity, just go there. So for me, x dot desire is equal to zero, omega desire is equal to zero, p dot desire is equal to zero. I can simply implement the two previous one with the zero in all the derivatives desired, but then I must pay attention that the meaning of the gains is different. I probably need to lower the gains, and you will see it in, uh, in practice. 
Okay, I have a square robot, I just use the inversion instead of the seed inversion. But if I'm using MATLAB, I, I don't see the difference because if I ask seed inverts for a square matrix, MATLAB activates the inverts library without telling anything, so it's the same. I can use the transpose instead of the, the seed inverts uh, in all the previous one, okay? Without any, without any, any change. So this is a recap of all of the situations that uh, we saw today. And we are going to implement it uh, in, a, in a progressively complex way, okay? As I told you, next Monday, we are going just to produce a desired time law. Uh, and the following Monday, we are going to, to implement the, the first cases. So position only, plan are very simple. Then we will use orientation uh, for the planner, that is the simplest one, and then we are going to use uh, orientation in a, in a full dimensional case. And uh, you are going to visualize the, the work with VREP when we will arrive at the full dimensional case, of course. Questions? <laughs>